Now here's our sixth example of how to deal with circular motion and keeping in mind Newton's second law. And this is kind of a complicated problem. It looks a lot like the previous one, except in this case, <coughs> excuse me, we also have coefficient of friction there. We have friction between the tires and the road. The road is banked. I didn't draw it here, but the car is going around a curve, radius 75 meters. And how fast can the car drive? What's the maximum speed the car can have without the car sliding off the road? So how do we do that? Well, let's try to identify all the forces acting on the car. The easy one, of course, is the weight. So that's the mg of the car, like this. And since it's on an incline, there's, of course, the perpendicular component, mg cosine of theta. And there's the horizontal component, which is the mg sine of theta. All right. Now we also, because of the motion around the curve, there's what we would call centrifugal force, force that's trying to push the car to the outside. So we have this force right here, which is F sub C. It's of course a fictitious force, a centrifugal force, but it has the same equation as the centripetal force, mv squared over r. Since again the car is on an incline, we have what we would call the uh, parallel component and the perpendicular component. So this would be the m v squared over r times the sine of theta, and there is the m v squared over r times the cosine of theta. And again, you can see that if m v squared over r is bigger than m g sine theta, the car would tend to go this way. If it's smaller, the car would tend to go this way. But that's not the whole story. Since there's friction, we also have to take into account the friction force. And so we can <clears throat> let's draw the normal force. Uh, which is going to be the reactionary force of the surface pushing back against the car. This is the normal force. And notice the normal force pushes back against both the mg cosine theta component and the mv squared over r sine theta component. So both of these components are pushing the car into the surface, and the surface then is pushing back. So the normal force, and let me get rid of the mass of the car right here. We all know that it's 1,000 kilograms, so I can write in the normal force is equal to the mg cosine theta component plus the mv squared over r times the sine of theta component. All right, now, which direction will the friction force act? Well, it can go either way. If the car is driving too slow, then the car would tend to slide down to the inside of the, the, the road here, and then the friction force would be to the outside. So if we asked what is the minimum velocity a car can have before it would slide down to the inside of the road, we'd put the friction force to the outside. But in this case, the car is going to drive fast. We want to find the maximum velocity, which means if it goes too fast, the car will slide up the hill, and it's the friction that's supposed to prevent that. So the friction force will be to the left. So force friction which is equal to the normal force times mu is going to help the car stay on the road prevent it from sliding to the right because the, the car may be going too fast. So now we can see there's a balancing of forces here. We have the mg sine theta component and the friction force trying to push the car to the left. We have the mv square r over, uh, times the cosine of theta, which is the parallel component of the centrifugal force trying to push the car up the hill. And when they're balanced, then we can find the maximum velocity. So we're going to set that equal to this. Remember, the friction force can uh, change, the, the quantum friction force can change depending upon, um, it will always match what is required to keep the car where it is until it can no longer do so. All right, so we have the forces to the left, which is mg sine of theta plus the normal force times mu, which are the two forces pushing it to the right, and set it equal to the mv squared over r times the cosine of theta. And again, the friction force can vary in size. We'll always try to meet the demand required for the car to stay on the road. And so we're going to look for the maximum velocity when this is the maximum value that it can have. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and solve this equation for V. Hmm, that means we want to multiply both sides by R, divide both sides by M, and times the cosine of theta. So, let's see here. We have r divided by m cosine theta. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing the m down over here, I'm bringing the r up there, and bring the cosine theta down here, and multiplying all that by what I have on the left side, mg sine theta 
plus the normal force times mu, and that will equal v squared. That's the only thing I have left on the right side of the equation when I put the r over here, the m down here, and the cosine of theta down here. And then finally, I can turn the equation around, take the square root of both sides, and I get v is equal to the square root of, we have r divided by m cosine theta multiplied times mg sine theta plus the normal force times mu. Okay, now I'm not done yet because the normal force is actually equal to all this stuff right here. So I'm going to rewrite the equation and replace n by what I have n equal to right up there. So I can say that the velocity is equal to the square root of, and you can see that this is not an easy problem, it's kind of a messy equation. We have the radius divided by m times the cosine of theta, multiply that times mg sine of theta, and then multiply it times n times mu, and n is equal to that, so that it would be plus mg cosine of theta times mu, and plus mv squared over r times the sine of theta times mu. Wow! So now I have the equation that allows me to find the velocity. Now we can simplify it just a little bit. Notice that we have an m here in the denominator and an m in each of the three terms. So this m cancels out every one of these three m's. So that makes it a little bit easier. And then we can divide the cosine of theta into the sine, the cosine, and the sine right there to simplify a little bit more. And so this is v is equal to the square root of r times g sine divided by cosine is the tangent of theta plus g cosine divided by cosine is 1, so g times mu, and plus v squared over r times sine divided by cosine, which is tangent of theta. So you can see that makes it at least a little bit easier, a little bit simpler to work with. Yes, I did forget to mu. Can I do that? Thank you. So here we go. I still have to have a mu there. Ah, very good. Now, is there something else that we can do to simplify? I think that's good enough. I guess, yeah, we'll go ahead with that. Let's now plug in all the numbers that we have. So the velocity is equal to the square root of the radius, 75, times g, 9.8, times the tangent of 10 degrees, plus 9.8, times mu, which is 0 0.3, uh, plus v squared. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? Oh, oh, oh. Ah, I see a slight complication here. I was a little bit lazy, and what I did was I put n times mu, but then I realized when I'm working out the problem that n also contains a velocity term in there, so that means I have to hmm, solve for that velocity term before I can do anything else. So that's what I get for being a little bit lazy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to square both sides, which means I'm going to get rid of this square root symbol. So I'm going to square both sides of the problem. So square the left side, square the right side by getting rid of the square root symbol. Then I have to move that term over here. So now I have v squared minus v squared over r times the tangent of theta times mu. And set that equal to, oh, don't forget I have this r. So if I multiply this r times this r, the r's cancel out. So that simplifies that. So this r will cancel out this r in this term. I move it to the left. I get v squared times the tangent of theta times mu. And then I have this left on the left side. I can factor out a g. I can factor out an r. And so it gives me r times g multiplied times the tangent of theta plus mu. All right. So now I have v squared minus v squared. I can factor out a v squared. So I end up with v squared times 1 minus the tangent of theta times mu is equal to rg times the tangent of theta plus mu. And then if I divide both sides by this quantity, I have v squared is equal to the square root. Oh, not yet. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I want to put that square root back in there, but I'm not quite ready. So this is rg times the tangent of theta plus mu. Is that plus mu? Yep, right there. Okay. Divided by, when I break this down here, which is 1 plus the tangent of theta times mu. 
And then, of course, when I take the square root of both sides, this disappears, and I have that. Okay, now we can go ahead and plug in the numbers to find velocity. So velocity is equal to the square root of r, which is 75, g, which is 9.8, times the tangent of 10 degrees plus 0 0.3, which is mu, all divided by 1 plus the tangent of 10 degrees multiplied times mu 0 0.3. All right. Now I'm ready to go ahead and figure all that out. Let's see here. Hmm. We have 10, take the tangent of that, plus 0.3. Okay. Multiply that times 9.8. Multiply that times 75, and divided by the quantity, take the tangent of 10 degrees, 10, take the tangent, times 0.3 plus 1 equals, and then take the square root, and it's 18.2 meters per second. So velocity is equal to 18.2 meters per second. Wow, let's try to review this and see if that all makes sense. So, we have a car going around the back curve. The curve is banked, the rate is 75 meters, friction is 0.3. We determined that the car has weight, mg, so we draw this into two components, the perpendicular component, the horizontal component. The car is also going around the circle pretty fast, so there's a centrifugal force to the right, which is mv squared over r which can be divided into the parallel and perpendicular components. The two components that are pushing the car into the road will be reacted to by the reactionary force, which is a normal force, which is equal to the sum of these two, mv squared over r times the sine of theta times mg cosine of theta. Okay. Now, we also have the friction force, which will keep the car from sliding to the right. The friction force is a normal force times mu. There is a normal force times mu. So, now we can go ahead and say that if these two forces right here equal this force right there, the car will stay in place. So mg sine theta plus the normal force times mu equals mv squared of r times the cosine of theta, which is this component right there. Right? Then I started solving for v. So I went ahead and algebraically solved this equation for v, and I got this. I forgot that n also contains a v squared term in there. So I just went on in my ignorance and continued with the problem. Then I realized when I replaced n by what n is equal to, I ended up with a v squared there, which means I have to factor that thing out as well. So I square both sides, move this term to the left, realizing that r divided by r cancels out, so I end up with a v squared times the tangent of theta times mu on the left side. On the left side, I can then say I can factor out a v squared, leaving with a 1 minus this, and that equals the right side, which was this times r, but I can also factor out a g, so I have rg times tangent of theta plus u. Then I can divide both sides by this quantity right here, take the square root, get rid of the square right there, plug in the numbers, and I get my velocity. Wow, quite a problem. Just make sure that you get these things correct here in order to figure out what that velocity is. And that's how you do that problem.